third grade math, lesson 9.7. We're going to talk about equivalent fractions. And we modeled equivalent fractions in the video before this, 9.6, which is linked in the description if you haven't seen it. We can use models to name equivalent fractions. We can use fraction strips, fraction circles, fraction walls, number lines, and drawings with shaded parts. Equivalent fractions name the same amount. We use an equal sign to show they represent the same amount. They represent shaded parts that are the same size and are from the same size holes. So here we have two rectangles that are the same size. This one's split into four equal parts. This one was split into four equal parts and then into eight equal parts by this vertical line being drawn down the middle here. This one-fourth shaded part is the same amount as these two-eighths shaded parts. So one-fourth is equal to two-eighths. Tim bought a pizza to share equally with three friends, and the pizza was cut into eighths. What are the two ways to describe the part of the pizza that each friend ate? So remember, Tim plus three friends is equal to four people. So now we have a pizza cut into eighths that we need to share with four people. Tim grouped the slices into twos, and we can draw circles to show equal groups of the two slices to show what each person ate. And there are four equal groups. Each group is one-fourth of the whole pizza. So each person ate one-fourth of the whole pizza. They each got two slices, which is one-fourth of the entire pizza. And each person ate two-eighths of the pizza. If we look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces, and one person ate two of them, we could say they ate two-eighths of the entire pizza. If we put them into groups of two, we can say they ate one-fourth of the pizza. So one-fourth and two-eighths are equivalent fractions since they both name the same amount of pizza. One-fourth and two-eighths are two ways to describe the part of the pizza that each person ate. We can circle equal groups and write an equivalent fraction for the shaded part of the whole. Here we have four one-eighth pieces, so that's four-eighths. If we make it into two equal groups, then we could say this four-eighths is half of this fraction strip. Four-eighths is equal to one-half. Here we've got a fraction strip of eighths. We've got four-eighths shaded in. One, two, three, four. And we can put them into four equal groups. Two in this one, two in this one, two in this one, two in this one. And we can say two of the four equal groups are shaded in. We can say four-eighths is equal to two-fourths. Here we have six penguins wearing coats. Three of the six penguins are wearing blue coats. That's three out of six. Three sixths. We can split them into two equal groups, those wearing blue coats and those not wearing blue coats, and half the penguins are wearing blue coats. We can say three six, three of the six, is equal to one of the two groups, half of the equal groups. We can write a fraction for the shaded part of each model. Here we have a rectangle in six equal parts, and all six are shaded. Six of the six parts are shaded. Six six is shaded. That means the whole thing is shaded, doesn't it? The same numerator and denominator, it means it's equal to one. So the whole, one whole thing is shaded. Here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there are eight equal parts, and three are shaded green. Three of the eight are shaded. Three-eighths is shaded. Here we have a strip with ten equal parts, and all ten are shaded. Ten of the ten parts are shaded. Ten-tenths is shaded. Same numerator and denominator. It's equal to one. We have the entire one whole thing shaded. 
Chris and Tim ordered two same size pizzas. Chris ate six twelfths of his pizza. Tim ate four eighths of his pizza. Who ate more pizza? Well, we can use a fraction wall and shade in six twelfths and shade in four eighths to compare the fractions. And there are images of these fraction walls and fraction strips on my Joanne School Facebook page image section. And you can copy and paste and print and cut them out to help you. So let's take a closer look at this. We need to figure out who ate more pizza. Shading in the fraction wall, we can see they both are the same length. 4 eighths is the same length as 6 twelfths. 6 twelfths is equal to 4 eighths. That means Chris and Tim ate the same amount. Tala bought 10 popsicles. She chose 2 lemon, 3 cherry, and 5 grape. She and her family ate the cherry and grape popsicles. What fraction of the popsicles did they eat? We have 10 equal parts for the 10 popsicles. 3 were cherry, 5 were grape, 2 were lemon. But they ate the cherry and the grape ones. 3 plus 5 is 8. They ate 8 of the 10 equal parts. They ate 8 out of the 10. That's 8 tenths. And we can divide the 10 into 5 equal parts with 2 in each one, each part. We can say they ate four of the parts. That means they ate four-fifths of the popsicles. And four-fifths is equal to eight-tenths. We just grouped it differently, didn't we? Emma has four candy bars, each cut in half. What fraction names all the candy bar halves? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight half pieces. And two would be our denominator because that's how many pieces for each candy bar. We have eight half pieces of each candy bar cut in half. We have eight halves. And if Emma cut each half in half, each candy bar would be cut into fourths. If we took each of these half pieces and cut them in half, then the whole candy bar would be cut into one, two, three, four pieces. They would be cut into fourths. And she would have 16 one-fourth pieces. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Or we can look at it as 4 times 4 is 16. She has 16 fourth pieces. And each candy bar is in four pieces. We would read this as 16 fourths. And 8 halves is equal to 16 fourths. She still has a total of four candy bars. They just went from being cut into two pieces to now being cut into four pieces. We have the same amount of candy bar, just in smaller pieces now, 16 fourths. We need to circle the fractions that are equivalent, that means equal to, half. Let's look at this first one. We have three fifths. We can draw five dots. And we can circle three of them. Did we circle half the dots? No. So it's not that one. We have two-fourths. Is that equivalent to a half? We can make four dots. We can circle two of them. Did we circle half the dots? Yes, we did. There's two in this one and two on this side. So that is equivalent to a half. What about four-eighths? We can make eight dots. We can circle four of them. Did we circle half of the dots? Yes, we did. So four eighths is also equivalent to a half. Here we have two sevenths. If we have seven dots and circle two of them, would we have circled half of them? Seven dots, we circle two of them. Is that half the dots? No, so that is not equivalent to one half. Here we need to circle the fractions that are equivalent to one third. We have two sixths. We can make six dots and 
we can make groups of two. Is this group of two right here one-third of all the dots? Yeah, it's one group of three. So this is equivalent to one-third. What about three-ninths? If we had nine dots and we circled three of them, would that be one-third of the dots? Well, we could do another three right here and another three right here, and that would be one of the three groups. So yes, that would be one-third. What about two-eighths? If we had eight dots, and we circled two of them, is that one-third of all the dots? Well, that would be another two, that would be another two, and that would be another two. Oh, we have one, two, three, four groups. That's one of four groups, so that is not equivalent to one-third. What about four twelfths? Is that equivalent to one third? We can make 12 dots. We can circle four of them. Is that one of three parts? We have four here. We could do another four here. We can do another four here. So that would be three groups of four, and this one would be one of those groups. So yeah, that would be one group of four out of three groups with 12 in all. So this one would be equivalent to one-third. So you can just make dots and circle the groups and see if, like in this one, the three would be one of three groups to be one-third. See? You can also shade in a fraction wall or use fraction strips or fraction pieces to help you find if they're equivalent. We're at the end of chapter nine, so you should have your eight multiplication facts memorized. They need to be memorized as well as you know that one plus one is two. You have to be able to answer it that fast. We're gonna be moving on to chapter 10 and you need to be working on your nine multiplication facts. So remember that equivalent fractions name the same amount. They represent shaded parts that are the same size and are from the same size holes. We're going to talk about time, telling time, length, liquid volume, and mass in Chapter 10, which is all about measurement. Have a wonderful day, and I hope I'll see you there. Bye.